Hey everyone. So today let's talk about safety, right? Everyone's getting these giant LifePo cells. Uh, they're huge. They've got tons of capacity. That's amazing. And they're also really affordable. Also amazing. But they're huge batteries with lots of capacity and it'd be really, really easy to hurt yourself, destroy the batteries, start a fire, etc. So what are some of the things that we can do uh, in terms of safety, right? I think you should definitely watch this video if you're, you know, worried, making sure that you want to handle these LifePo batteries correctly. So first thing first, if you're going to deal with these, you need glasses, right? Uh, you can get these at Home Depot or Lowe's or something for like four or five bucks or online at Amazon. I'll put a link in the uh, description below, but they're totally worth it. Why? Well, if you're connecting something like an inverter um, or anything with capacitors, there's a really good chance you could do a spark. Um, and if you have an accident, if you accidentally, for example, connect negative and positive cells by accident, something that you know some of us who are not geniuses have done before, you might also get a spark. That spark is molten metal, uh, and it could easily get you in the eye and cause real damage. Uh, if you get it on your, in your skin, you know, it might hurt a little bit, it might burn a little bit, not a big deal. But if it gets in your eye, big deal, right? So buy some glasses, wear some glasses. It's really easy, and it will protect you. Other thing, wear insulating gloves. Uh, that's really straightforward, right? These are electric. If you accidentally touch two things, if I wire this up to 48 volts and accidentally connect the negative and the positive uh, with my hands, well, guess what? I'm going to have 48 volts, which isn't a huge amount of voltage, but it, you could, you'll, it's above 30 volts. You'll probably feel it. And the amount of amperage this can push, push is tremendous. So you could have a lot of power running through your body all at once. You don't want that. Wear gloves. Uh, another good advice is just use one hand at a time. Don't be up here with two hands doing this. Just deal with one hand at a time. That'll make your life a lot easier. So yeah, if you're just using one hand, then you know, you're much less likely to connect the negative and the positive terminals, okay? And if you're insulated already with your glove, you'll be in great shape. You'll be doubly less likely, okay? Okay, so those are two safety, basically the only safety equipment you really need are these gloves and these glasses. The other thing you might wanna be working with is tape, right? So there's all sorts of tape. You can use classic electrical tape. Um, there's that, you know, that non-conducive tape that everyone's using and there's simple duct tape, right? But tape can be really helpful, uh, in particular, in just protecting you from making mistakes while you're assembling your batteries, right? So here I've got uh, 16 cells, and I've got all my studs in them. But let's say I wanted to actually, you know, let's say I was going to wire these in parallel or something like that. I'm about to actually wire them in series, but let's say they were going to be in parallel. Well, while you're working on one side of the battery terminals, you can easily take some tape and cover up the other side, right? Something as simple as this. It's just gonna drastically reduce the chance that you accidentally drop maybe a tool, maybe a screwdriver, maybe a wrench or something. Drastically reduce the, uh, decrease the chance you're gonna drop that. It's gonna connect the negative and positive, cause sparks, deplete the battery, damage your equipment, hurt yourself, cause a fire, all those sorts of things. So you're much less likely to accidentally close a circuit and short circuit things if you've got some tape on the terminals that you're about to use. Now I know with studs that can be a little more difficult. Um, you can still try and use the tape on the studs. For example, if you just do it on the side like this, right? So let's say I'm working on this half of the battery. Just putting this up alone is still going to probably meaningfully add some safety. And it costs you about 10 seconds and, 10, and about, you know, three cents of tape. So it's probably uh, something worth doing. Okay? Great. So next tip, your battery cell and battery cell orientation. Uh, this is a little different in terms of safety, but this is in terms of preventing damage to your cells. There's been a lot of debate about how should I orient my cells? Is it safe to, you know, basically put them on their side like this or put them on the side like this, right? And from what I've been reading is you really don't want to do that. Uh, some of these you can actually hear the electrolyte moving around, but I know in some of the, I believe it was Eve cells uh, from Big Battery, people had some leaks. Uh, Will Pros had some le leaks from his battery on the side. Basically, this is a little venting terminal right here. In case you get expansion, uh, this can allow the electrolyte to leak. The last thing you want to do is put this on its side, put a lot of pressure on it, uh, you know, maybe from stacking the batteries, and then, you know, have a leak and have the electrolyte just leak out the side, right? If you put it on top, you're much less likely to have a leak. Um, I would never put them like this. I haven't seen anyone recommend that this is okay. I have seen some people say this is okay, but generally speaking, I would keep my cells upright like this if I, unless I really had a good reason otherwise. The other uh, important safety tip around that is if you do get leaky electrolyte, you have to be very, very careful. This is a very toxic, 
dangerous substance. So you're gonna need uh, probably some sort of like vapor or gas mask protection. You're gonna want gloves. You're not gonna wanna get any of it on your skin. Uh, and you're probably gonna wanna call the manufacturer of your battery uh, and figure out, you know, best way to deal with that. But basically, if you have a leaky battery, don't take it very seriously. Don't just get in there with a the mop and try to clean up some of this electrolyte and, and throw it in the trash. It needs to be properly disposed of and dealt with carefully, okay? So if you do come across a leaky battery, please take it very safe, uh, seriously for your own safety. I don't have all the information on what you're supposed to do with it, but generally speaking, absolutely you need to wear gloves. Do not get it on your skin. Do not inhale the vapors, okay? And lastly, um, this is a tip that I see a lot of people use. Um, is this is a resistor. So this is a 100 ohm resistor, but they come in all different sizes. They have one ohm resistors or, or larger. Um, but basically you wanna get a resistor with a high ohm value, right? You don't wanna get like one is okay, maybe, but like uh, you wanna get something maybe 10, 25, or even 100 or 1000 would be better. Basically these resistors allow a small amount of electricity through them, right? They resist electricity. They let some through, but not a lot. They're way, they allow, allow a lot, way less electricity than for example, a wire. So why do you need a resistor? By the way, you can buy them on Amazon like 10 at a time for 10 bucks or something. Why do you need a resistor? Well, if you're gonna uh, connect an inverter to your batteries, which you are almost certainly gonna do, um, or you're gonna connect anything that has capacitors in it, and your inverters typically have capacitors, when you connect them, you often can get a spark, right? You'll connect them to the, uh, the positive to the positive after the negative is connected and you'll get a spark, right? And besides that spark having safety issues for you, obviously every time a spark goes by, it could hit something or, or, hit, or hurt you. Um, that is maybe supercharging the capacitors too much. So basically, if you, if you, if you all of a sudden hit the, uh, hit the connect the inverter to power, so much power, power can flow, flow, throw, flow through to your capacitors that you can pop your capacitors. Basically, you can break your capacitors really easily if you don't use a resistor to pre-charge your capacitors. It's one of the easiest ways to break your capacitors and break your very expensive inverter. So buy this resistor, and this is what you can do. You connect the negative to the battery, right? Obviously, do a better job than that. This is just for demonstration purposes. And when you connect the positive, and this is the positive terminal, what you want to do is touch this to this. That's going to pre-charge it. Some electricity is flowing from the negative to the positive, charging up the capacitor. Then you fully connect it. So all you're doing is pre-charging the capacitors with a large resistor. This lets a little bit of electricity through. It charges the capacitors in the inverter very slowly, uh, lets them fill up with power rather than connecting all at once, filling them, with, filling them with power and maybe having them pop on you, okay? Uh, which probably isn't a safety hazard so much as it, it's going to destroy your inverter. So pre-charge your inverters with a really cheap resistor, okay? So just to recap, everything I'm describing that I think you actually need, a pair of gloves, you can get like 10 for $5 at Home Depot, a pair of clear protective goggles, maybe some duct tape, right? And a group of resistors. We're talking total expenses, like way less than 20 bucks, and it'll make all the difference in terms of safety. So last thing I would just say is, Safety really matters with these. You can genuinely hurt yourself. You can genuinely kill yourself. You can start a fire. You could burn down your house. You could expose you, you or yourself, your loved ones to toxic chemicals. These are not toys. These are not off the shelf equipment. They are not ready to use. You have to get them right. You have to assemble them. They're a big deal. So take them very, very seriously. Don't be casual with them. I know in some of my other videos, just for demonstration purposes, I was pretty casual uh, and I'm sorry for that. Don't be casual, be very careful. Uh, please like or subscribe for these videos if, if you enjoyed them at all. And I appreciate any comments you have. If I've made any mistakes, if I missed anything, if you have any suggestions, I really appreciate it in the comments below. Thanks.